Okay, everybody, I want to share this message because there's a tremendous problem going on and I've been sharing and saying this for a long time and people are not getting it. People are not getting it and it's an imperative deception and trick of the enemy to destroy people. You see, the enemy knows us, but we don't know the enemy. And the way to defeat the enemy is to know the enemy and resist the enemy and he would run away. There's a spiritual battle going on, a serious spiritual battle going on, and people are confused. This identity crisis of, of, of gender is not a new thing, but we have even a more of identity crisis of who we belong to, Yah or the enemy, Satan. Who are we going to serve? And it's created a tremendous problem here today. So it's very interesting how this works, and this is important for people to get. As children we are influenced by the people around us you understand that i'll say that again as children we are influenced by the people around us and in in yah's plan in yah's world it's the mother and the father who are going to influence the children as it says in the shema teach children the way they should go you know teach them his commands, his statutes, but that's not happening today. There's a, been a break in that. So the children are no longer being taught by their parents. They're being sent off to be taught by the world and the world's ways. And the world's ways are the ways of the enemy. So children are being misled. But what happens then is children become older and they stop looking at other people as their source of, of learning, and they start thinking with their own mind, right? They start thinking with their flesh. I mean, as their babies, they'll think with their flesh as well, but uh, they'll get scolded if they do something that, that's wrong, or at least they should. And if they don't, you know, scriptures say, you know, parents that love their children will discipline them, you know? So, but, you know, the children that aren't disciplined, they're setting themselves up for a big, a big issue, a big problem. So, so, so keep this in mind. Everything was saying. So the children are no longer influenced by the the parents or the uh, or the other adults. Now the children make up their own mind, right? So now is the time where a child, if he's taught to trust Yah as he's grown up, it should shift, and now he should be trusting Yah and Yah's word over the people around him and over himself. You see, it's the job of the parents when they're raising their children to teach them, you know, your feelings matter, your emotions matter, but your decision to follow y'all is the most important thing you can do as you get older. And when you make decisions in life, it should be according to Yahweh's word, according to Yahweh's word. But what happens is, and this is how the enemy really destroys people is puberty. It's puberty. Because Yah's plan is for families to be together, for procreation, for, for, for people of Yah to have a desire to uh, procreate and, and, and continue to follow him and his ways and his plan. And that's the way it should be. And that's the way he wanted it to be always. And that's the way uh, it should be. But what's happening is the plan is not correct. People are not following Yah's plan. People are following the old. That's why it says in the scriptures, know the plans I have for you. They are for good and not disaster to give you a future, give you hope. That's Yah's plan. But then there's the plan that says, there's a way before each person that seems right and ends in death. And I will tell you, and I know some of you that are watching right now, some of you that are watching right now have a wonderful heart, but you've been misled and deceived in your adolescence, and it is carried over to now. And we as men are supposed to be men of Yah and leaders. And as women, you are supposed to be uh, gentle and submissive and, 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 and fulfill the role of a mother and a man as a father, and it's the way it's supposed to be. And this goes even beyond the dangers of the, the gender uh, issue of identification 
because it goes way beyond a, a man thinking he's a female or a female thinking he's a female, which is worse, is a man thinking he's a man, but he's acting as a female, and a female thinking she's a female, but she's acting as a man. So these roles are all messed up, and this confusion goes way beyond because the physical side is very obvious, but the non-physical side is a real issue. Well, Yah has an order. Yah gives instructions in everything. And Yah gives a covenant. And he gives, he gives this. But here's, here's the problem. There, there, we got the enemy has taken over so much of what Yah wants for us to be. And I will say this and come out and say this too. The way of the enemy has become the way of the world. And the separating of families and destroying of families is the big problem. And it's vanity and manipulation. That's what this message is about today. Vanity and manipulation. We have been mistrained in the world to be, to grow up to be people y'all wants us to be. And we are engulfed in vanity. In vanity. And we are using that vanity in a way to manipulate others. And, and because men are not trained the right way to discern between good and evil, they are falling for this deception. So here's what it is. Women and men. Yah wants men to be trained up to be leaders and to be wise and discern between good and evil. And women, Yah wants women to, to, to be humble and submissive. But these two things are the opposite in today's world. Men are not brought up to be leaders and wise and, and, and would use wisdom and discernment. Men are, are brought up in, 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 in fleshly, uh, spoiled, Pleasing their flesh more than Yah's word with no discernment at all. With no discernment. With money or relationships or life, no discernment at all. And women are brought up strictly into vanity and manipulation. This is wrong and this is not what Yah wanted, but that's the way it's become. And this is a big problem. The Bible warns against both of these things. And I'm not blaming women and men. I'm blaming you both, women and men. Men, you need to discern and to be wise. And women, you need to be humble and submissive. But you're not because you have vanity and manipulation on your heart. And it's not something that you desired. It's something that you were trained to do because that's what the world trains people to do today. And when I say men and women, I'm not saying men and women across the board. I'm saying the majority of what is out there today and how the enemy is using men and women in today's world. And this has become the problem. So we could sit here today and we could talk about, we could talk about the stuff that, oh, you know, ministries are talking about prophecies. Ministries are talking about what happens when we die. Where do we go? Ministries are talking about do we need to keep the Torah and and what is the Sabbath and all of this. No, this is the this is what we need to be talking about is to teach men to be men and leaders and to teach women to be humble and submissive. And that's not happening. And the roles are being transferred. And men want to look like. Uh, 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 men want to look like women and women want to act like men and it's all messed up out there today. We need to understand this, the vanity, the manipulation, and the discernment. These are the real issues that we need to, to get because this is where it starts. Vanity is being pushed on our daughters and the, the, the manipulation that they're teaching uh, their children and then the men are just so blind to see these things. And it's a shame. It's a shame. Men should see trouble coming. Men should be watchmen. That's what our role is. And they should be trouble coming from far away, but they let that trouble come around them. It's a problem. 
It's a big problem. So we look at this and we see this. So I want to talk a little about uh, 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 vanity, deception, and manipulation. And let's get down to the truth here of what's really happening in today's society and even in the church because people don't get this. They don't see this happening in the church. But these are the real issues that we need to be discussing. But these are the people, the things that people don't want to admit. And many of you listening right now, you might shake your head and agree with me and all this, but well, let's really get down to it because many of us don't think we're falling for these things because I see this. Let me tell you this. Forget about the world for a second because the world is the world and we know about the world. But I see those that confess to know Yeshua, the one they call Jesus as their Messiah, manipulating into vanity, having no discernment. Yes, this is your children. Your daughters, your sons, no discernment at all. Strictly into vanity and manipulation. But guess where they get it from? They get it from you. They get it from the parents. Because I see the parents doing the same thing. The same thing. And we're going to talk about that. So let's look a little into some scriptures. What they say about the vanity. And you tell me if you think that we don't have an issue within the church. So Proverbs 30, verse 13. Proverbs is another word for wisdom. And Proverbs verse uh, Proverbs 30, verse 13. Sorry, 30, verse 13 says, Oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. Their eyelids are lifted up. Proverbs 31, 30 says, Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears Yah, she shall be perished. I will submit to you that those two verses right there show us the truth about vanity and manipulation. This generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes. Their eyelids are lifted up. Proverbs 31, 30, charm is deceitful. Charm. You know, men and women want to be charming today. Charm is deceitful. Charming is deceptive. Charming is manipulating. And beauty is vain. Vanity. You know, women say, oh, that man is so charming, so charming. The next thing you know, he's beating them up and, uh, and running out on them and cheating on them. And women say, oh, beauty is vain. Women want to look all beautiful and into vanity and everything else. They care more about the way they look than taking care of their own family. But a woman who fears Yah shall be praised. And it, it's the awe of Yah. You know, you know, but, you know, but, you know, the Bible says pride comes before destruction. Well, it says in Proverbs 21, 4, haughty eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of wickedness are the sin. You know, this is it. Pride comes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a, a, a fall. People have been trained today to, 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 to follow idols and idolize one each other. You know, where the scriptures tell little children to stay away from idols, but they're looking at their own parents and their parents are the idols. They're idolizing themselves. You got men idolizing their wives, wives idolizing themselves, and it's just teaching our children the wrong things. We are to be set apart from the world and the world's ways and the things of this world. The desires of the eyes are the pride of life, the scriptures say. If something looks good, men aren't trained to discern, so they see something that looks good and they run right for it. That's why you see the devil in all these movies dressed as some beautiful woman. You know, and people are, and men are just falling out. It says like a, a man going to the slaughter, you know, just like just going to these, these women that are into vanity and manipulation. Do not be conformed to this world. Watch your eyes, men. Watch your eyes. It got Samson in trouble. Samson, this uh, one of the strongest men, if not the strongest, most powerful man in the world, supposed to be the savior of Israel. His eyes were his downfall. And it's very interesting. This was the first thing Yah did when he realized he messed up. Yah took away his eyesight. Yah took away his eyesight. Men need to be taught as young ages to to, to, to control their eyes, to know what they're looking at and to realize what they're looking at and to have spiritual vision, spiritual vision. And that's not what we're taught. Because when a man sees a deceptive 
manipulating women and they can't discern between good and evil, they fall for that. And this is why the enemy is leading many men astray. It's a big problem. This vanity and this, 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 this problem in today's world. You know, so, so, so we need to be wise about these things. It says in Psalms 119, 37, turn my eyes away from the worthless things and give me life through your ways. Turn my eyes away from the worthless things and give me life through your ways. So, I mean, this is a message for men and women, but as men being watchmen and protectors, this is what men, this is one of the most important verses a man should have and hold on to. Turn my, my ways from looking at worthless things. A worthless thing is something that's deceiving, decepti deceptive, deceiving, and, and, and just going to lead a man right down a, a road he shouldn't be going. You know, a man should acknowledge the steps that Yah has before him. And so these are the things we need to we, we need to think about. And I feel so bad for these young men out there today that are just have no vision, no spiritual vision at all. It creates a, 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 a tremendous issue, a tremendous issue. So we need to get away from the pride change the, the these the eyesight and these things and then you look at the deception and manipulation of vanity in Isaiah 3 16 and 7 he says the women of Zion are haughty walking along with outstretched necks flirting with their eyes strutting along swaying their hips because they're wearing high heels with ornaments jingling on their ankles therefore Yah will bring sores on the heads of the women of Zion and Yah will make this their scalps bald because they worship their hair. In that day, Yah will stretch out their, their, their finery and, and, and the bangles and headbands and, and, and crescent necklaces. You know, we need to, to see this and what's happening. Jeremiah 4, 29, 30 says, at the sound of horsemen and archers, every town takes fight. Some go into thickets, some climb among the rocks, all the towns are deserted. No one lives in them. What are you doing, you devastated one? Why dress yourself in scarlet and put on jewels or gold? Why highlight your eyes with makeup and adorn yourselves in vain? Your lovers despise you and they want to kill you. We need to understand about the reality of the vanity and the manipulation and the discerning of the eyes. We need to understand this. The Bible talks about manipulation. And yes, I am telling you this. And I don't know, you're not going to hear other teachers talk about this, everything else, but I am telling you the manipulation. We look at the children of Israel and the women of Moab, how they seduced the men of Israel. Those men of Israel were the guilty ones, not the women of Moab. The women of Moab were just doing what they were trained to do to deceive men. The women of the men of Israel, they had no discernment to see the wickedness of that because the beauty of the flesh, the false appearance of the flesh, was more powerful in them than the discernment of the eyes of being watchmen that Yah trained them to be. And that is the exact problem we have in today's world. Women are taught and trained at a young age, even by Christian women, to be manipulative in the way they look. And men are trained and taught by their fathers, even Christian fathers, to have no discernment between good and evil. And we get into this problem where a man will choose a woman who's manipulative and a man will not have no discernment. They will get themselves into trouble. The man will not know how to lead the women. The women will not want to be led. And it's just going to create one big problem. And that's where we are today. But you see it when you see a righteous, humble, modest girl brought up the right way. And a man of discernment of Yah brought up the right way. You see it in their marriage. You see it in their life. You see it in their, in their continence. You see it in their, in their shalom and their peace. Because they stuck in Yah's plan. Their parents taught them the way they should go. 
It says in the scriptures in Leviticus 25, 17, do not take advantage of each other, but fear Yah. I am Yah, your Elohim. First Thessalonians 6, 4, verse 6 says, and in this matter, no one should, should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. Yah will punish those who commit such sins as you uh, are warned before you. Watch out for the manipulators of this world. And this little girls, little male boys, this is your parents. Be careful. Be careful. It's definitely the TV. It's definitely the junk on TV. It's definitely the teachers of the world. In some cases, it's the parents. But it says in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, and no wonder for even Satan disguised himself as the angel of light. The people we think we could trust the most, the ones we need to be careful with, how we act and how we're doing. So these things, Galatians 1, 8, 9 says, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, that which has preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach another gospel unto you than he has received, let him be accursed. This is it. Who are we listening to for our spiritual guide? Who are we listening to? Beware of false prophets that come disguised, harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. Disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. When we think about this, I will say Matthew 7.15. We always think Matthew 7.15 is about, uh, the stream's a little bad here. Hold on. We always think Matthew 7.15 uh, 7 is, is about some preacher somewhere in some church that's leading people away. But I will submit to you, Matthew 7.15 is the vain, deceptive, immodest, high heel-wearing, makeup paint-facing woman. That's who it is. The false prophet disguised in a harmless sheep, but really a vicious wolf. Be careful. Be careful out there. It says in Romans 6, 18, such people are not serving Yeshua, our Messiah. They are serving their own personal interests. But smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people. They deceive innocent people. Second Peter 2, verse 1 says, but false prophets also arose among the people, as they will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Swift destruction. We need to be careful and watch our hearts and protect ourselves in these situations when it comes to these things. And I pray people are getting this, people are understanding this, people are discerning with this, and people are going to uh, take this uh, and, and, and evaluate your lives. Evaluate the things in your lives and make sure, make sure you're not falling into this trap. So praise, praise Yah that he's, he's given us the, the information and the discernment to know between good and evil so we don't fall into these things. And if we have, repentance, it says, brings refreshing. Repentance brings refreshing. And may we all repent for, for, the, for the days that we've, and the things we've created in the past that are an iron of Yah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So let's see here with the connection. Hopefully the connection's okay.
All right, so we're waiting for this connection, but I hope this is making sense to you and I hope uh, you're getting this. It says in John 16, 13, let's see here. Come on, computer. It's working on the live stream, hold on. See, the enemy doesn't want this word to get out, so he's trying to block it. You see what's happening here. I'll say it again. The enemy doesn't want to get this word out, but we rebuke the enemy in the name of Yeshua right now. Right now. Yes. Flee. Flee. That this would be fixed immediately. Bear with me here. Okay. I will get it. Okay, John 16, 13 says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into the truth. For he will not speak in his own authority, but whatever he hears will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will declare to you the things that are to come. So we need to pray and ask our creator about these things, about this truth, about the reality of what's really happening here. We need to discern between good and evil, between right and wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I pray, brothers and sisters, that 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 you'll get this. And 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 for men and women out there that you'll understand this. So um prayerfully this this it's okay here the The, the stream is okay. If the stream has been good, everyone, I don't know. Hold on. All right, good connection, good. So let's continue here. Try to continue. Okay. This, this is this is the deception. You know, to be deceived, men, pray continually and allow the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, to guide you and be careful. Be careful. Women, be careful. Women, when you see that charming men, men, when you see that perfect tent, be careful. The enemy will come and disguise himself in, in deception, vanity, and pride. That charming man's full of pride. That deceiving woman is full of vanity. And this is leading men and women astray. And the tools that are being used to make these things or push these things, be careful about this, men and women. This is what the enemy tries to do and tries to make happen. Romans 16, 18. For such people do not serve Yeshua, but they, their own appetites. They deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting with smooth talk and flattering words. Hebrews 13, 9, stop being carried away by all kinds of unusual teachings. For it is good that the heart be strengthened by grace, not by, it says, these food lords that never help those who follow them. <laughs> Ephesians 5, 6, don't let anyone deceive you with meaningless words. It is because of the sins like these that Yah's anger comes to those who rule or refuse to obey him. In 2 Colossians 2, 3, don't let anyone deceive you about this or any other way. They cannot come unless a revolt takes place first. And the men of sin and men of destruction are revealed. Be careful that no one takes you captive through phys physiology or, or empty deceit based on human tradition, based on the elementary force of the world Do not and, and not based in Yahshua. But evil people are imposters, and they will go from bad to worse and deceive others and deceive themselves. But as for you, continually continue in what you have learned to be found true, because you know whom you learned it. The last day, there will be many who will deceive. 
be careful that you are not deceived because many will come to the name and say, I am. Don't follow them. So this is it. This is it. Bad company ruins, <laughs> ruins good morals. That's, you know, just be careful. Deuteronomy 11.6 is my final warning here to men and to women. Be careful or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. And I will say this now in ending. Men need to learn to discern with their eyes because they're being led astray and they're worshiping other gods. And in many cases, those other gods are women. And men, it's, it's, it's you're guilty of not discerning between a woman of Yah and a woman of the world. If you see women like the average woman, and it might even be your wife, it might even be your wife that has been manipulated to do these things because that's the way she was taught up to do. And she might not, you know, be causing you to worship her, but she's going outside and other men are worshiping her because of the appearance that she puts on, the high heels and the face paint and the body parts that she's revealing. She is causing this same thing right here where other men are bowing down to her. Be careful, men. It's your job, a responsibility as a leader, not to let this happen. Discern. Your children, where they go. Men, be careful where you're sending your children and who is setting the examples in their lives. Men, be men of Yah. And be careful with this. Do not be enticed to turn away from worship. And not only your wife, but all the other women of the world that men are worshiping out there and will literally throw away everything for a painted face or a tight, tight clothes or something like this. Be careful, men. And ladies out there, ladies of Yah, you are not to partake in these deceptive practices of the world. You know, the tribes around the world, when they're ready to go to war, they put that war paint on. Well, you do want to call it war paint or face paint or makeup. Stop competing with this worship, this self-worship and this war paint. Break it. Break that, 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 that in your life that you need to walk outside with your war paint on your face to compete in your beauty, to get other men to lust over you and to look at you. And you might say, well, that's not my desire, but I'm saying the enemy has many tools. And your desire does not cancel out your appearance. Stop looking like the world. Stop looking like the world. I said it many times and I say it again. The modern women today is trained to put makeup on that face to make them look like they are in heat, to make them look like they want to have a baby and to entice men to want to sleep with them. That's the way makeup is worn today. That's, that's it. That's the... The, the whole idea of it. Do not fall into that trap, ladies. Do not fall into that trap. Not a little, not none. It's, it's, it's not of y'all. It's like a temporary tattoo on your face. Don't do it. You don't need it. Beautiful women of y'all don't need a deceptive tool to be like women of the world that in fact are deceptive. And the way you dress women, it's the same thing. You know, you have two signs that you choose to put on when you leave your house. One sign says, I am a woman of Yah. I am a man. I am I, a woman that has a husband and I am taken and, and, and loved by and protected. And don't even try looking at me or talking to me in that manner. And the other sign says, I am available. This is free for the taking. Come here and get it. And the women of the world that does their hair all fancy and wears their makeup and their high heels and their, and their, and their, and their tight pants, that's the sign that they're putting on themselves. So regardless of what your desire is, that's the sign that men are going to see. Now, 
It's up to the man to discern when he reads these different signs. If he identifies the enemy and his tactics and he's going to run away and resist, resist, and the enemy, the, the, the devil will run away. Or if he's going to be like the average man and, and start worshiping those signs, those signs. So there's a double responsibility here. Men to be men of Yah and leaders and, and, and watchmen and to discern with the right eyes, with the holy eyes. And to not fall into the trap that Yah wants them to fall into. The worship of the flesh and the woman. It's up to you to decide what sign you're going to put on when you go outside of your house. I'm telling you right now, all makeup. I don't want to hear a little makeup, some makeup. You know, this all makeup is a sign saying, I'm available, take me, I want to have a baby. In any way, in any fashion, you do not need makeup. You are putting on that war paint to compete with the world for the men's souls. And you are, you are following the devil's tactics and a way to do this. You could disagree with me all you want. You don't think you have a problem. You don't think you have an addiction. You don't think you were trained to do this. Go outside your house for a week without any makeup at all and see what happens. Not only how you're treated different by other men and other people of this world, but see what happens with you. How do you feel? Do you feel insecure and all this other stuff? See the traps that we've been trained to be poured into. Men and women, wake up. Wake up. Stop letting the, the enemy have his way. Stop letting the ha have his way. A lot of you are going to defend yourselves right now and not me and all this stuff. 1 John 1, 8 says, if we say that we do not have any sin, we are deceiving ourselves and we are not being truthful to ourselves. Being deceived by sin, which causes you to live in rebellion. It says in Obadiah 1, 3, you have been deceived by your own pride because you live in a rock fortress and make your home high in the mountains. Who can ever reach up that way here? Do not be deceived. Yah is not mocked for whatever us uh one sows that he will also reap galatians 6 7 galatians 6 7 yah has given us eyes to see discernment judgment instructions use what he's given us it says in john first john 1 8 the person who practices sin belongs to the evil one because the enemy has been uh sinning from the beginning so we need to be careful. We need to be careful. And then we fall into that and get it even worse. So not only do we do this stuff, we didn't even touch the idea of the sorcery and the, the drugs and the alcohol and the sorcery that enhances that, that enhances those feelings to want us, us want us to do it even more. Remember with Adam and Eve, remember. Yah ask Eve. What have you done? And what she say? The serpent deceived me. That's why I ate it. Who is to believe that the serpent, the enemy, the devil is still not around deceiving people? You need to be careful of what sign you're putting on when you leave in your house in a day. You know, so... Get this right. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and every, being hated and hating one another. That's Titus 3, 3, 6. But when the kindness of and the love of Yah Savior appeared, he saved us. He saved us. James one twenty two is what I leave you with today. Some of you are going to not like this message. Some of you are going to disagree with this message and some of you don't want to hear the truth of this message. I don't know how many different ways to tell you. These are the traps of the enemy and these are the things that are, are the daily things that are being done that are deceiving people. Men, you need to get strong in your understanding, strong in your vision, strong in the deception 
of the enemy and the devil and the demons and, and strong in this and understand this. It's no wonder why Hollywood would deceive and make the devil look like a beautiful woman. This is the reality of life. Men are falling for it and worshiping this. You know, and a man might say, well, my wife looks beautiful with that fake up and war paint on her face. Well, if you think she looks beautiful and sexy in that, well, what do you think every other man in this world thinks? And if you're a fallen and worshiping her, what about all the other men at work and everywhere else? And women and your pride and your vanity, it's the way you were brought up. I'm not saying you're, you know, you just desire to have those desires the way we're taught in today's world through the TV and everything else. Break it. Stop it. Stop it. The only man you need to press, impress is your husband. And you don't need to compete with other women to look good. You don't need to do that. James 1.22 is what I leave you with. But be doers of the world and not hearers uh, only. Deceiving yourselves. Deceiving yourselves. Remember Isaiah 19.13, the officials of Zion? Of Zion had become fools. The leaders of Memphis are deceived. The cornerstones of her peoples have led Egypt astray. Yah has poured into them the spirit of dizziness. They make Egypt stagger in a way she does, as a drunken staggers around his vomit. So let's, let's, let's be wise in our own eyes. And let's start taking this message serious that, sadly, there, are, there aren't enough people out there talking about these things. You know, and stop, stop lying to yourselves and saying you're not guilty of this. Your children deserve better. You deserve better. Your husband and your wife, you deserve better. Stop lying to yourself and saying you're not guilty of doing these things. Men, get strong in the eyes, not weak in your eyes and your discernment and your leadership. Women, humble yourselves. Drop the vanity. Take off the war paint. So I pray, I pray that people are getting this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So thank you. Thank you, Father, for this blessed day. Uh, thank you uh, for, for everyone listening to this message. May people get it and take it seriously. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua's name. Amen and hallelujah.